Hey, good morning girls. Happy Wednesday. So, we are on our path for day 33, I believe it is, of our summer challenge. And our topic is decisions. And so I guess God thought I needed to live out decisions yesterday. So no, this is not a hat on my head. Yes, somebody did my hair. And we had decisions to make yesterday on this. And, you know, I went in, I went into a higher priced salon because I wanted the highlights. Um, I went in with a picture. So I was prepared. I've had it done before. So I knew. And the gal did my hair. And when I was sitting there, after she had cut it, the cut's great. She did a great job with the cut. But I was sitting there looking at the color, and I was just not happy. And so I'm not somebody that's going to complain about it. Typically, I'm just going to go home and redo it. And so she asked me, how do you like it? What do you think? I said, well, it's not the color I expected. I was expecting the blonde highlights into the darker hair so that I could embrace my grays and start aging gracefully and letting the gray hair come in. And she's like, well, it's a process. We can't go that light. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to argue with you. I just want to go home at this point. I'm embarrassed, and I want to leave. And that's me. Because I don't want to tell someone they did a crappy job. I don't want to tell somebody they have to redo it. So my decision for the moment was to run away. You know, it's like we talked about the acronyms for fear. Well, this one was run away. So it was, uh, what was the thing we said here? Forget everything and run. That's what I did yesterday morning. I ran. I ran home. I cried. I was a carrot top. A pumpkin. And I cried. My husband called. I told him. I cried on him. And he's like, send me a picture. So I'm like, well, I don't want that picture anywhere, circulating anywhere for no matter what. So I sent it to him. And he's like, well, that's nice. <laughs> Until he, he was coming home, and he got me, and again, I was crying just because I had looked in the mirror. And he's like, what's wrong? And I said, I'm a freaking pumpkin. I am walking around with an orange head, a carrot top, because she wouldn't listen to me. And he's like, you need to call them back. We spent way too much money for you to be this upset. So I had to make a choice. And this was a decision that is hard for me because I am someone that if you mess up my hair, I can always put color on top. It will always grow back and I will run away. I will never come back to you again, but I just leave it alone. And I know that's not the best choice sometimes, because if she doesn't learn from her errors, she's not going to be a good hairdresser. Well, I went to an Aveda salon. Aveda is one of the top products out there. And usually their hair, their color people, are well trained. I think I got a newbie. And I think she was still getting trained, and the instructor was still around. So, I called them. And of course, cried on the phone, and that's really embarrassing because I don't like to do drama. <laughs> I really don't. So I called, and I just said I had my hair done, and I, I don't like it at all. I tried to think about it and marinate on it for the, the day and maybe look at it in different light. I said, but when I got home, it was worse. I said, it's orange. It's a carrot top. And so the girl puts me on hold, and then the manager comes back. And the manager was very nice. And she says, can you come back? We will fix it. And then I was horrified. I'm like, I didn't expect them to fix it. I don't know what I expected, but my husband was demanding they fix it. Because if his wife wasn't happy, they needed to make me happy. So we drove back in last night, and we spent another two and a half hours sitting there. And as you see, 
she got it really blonde, you know, and I'm sitting there wondering why couldn't she get this? Whoops, now I got a thing sticking up. Why couldn't she get this color done the way I asked her to do it in the first place? So now I have this horrible blonde up front with my color back here. And the whole purpose was to blend it so the gray could come in. Now the blonde is a gray color. It's just too much for me. So I'm having to adjust. But it's temporary because my hair will grow fast. The gray will come in. We can cut off all this stuff. So, but the decision I had to make was one of, do I call them back? Do I speak up? And then, do I hold myself in a place of responding versus reacting? Because, girls, you know how we are. Somebody messes up our hair like that, and we're going to react. But it was about taking that moment, taking that pause, and allowing God to work through me <coughs> through this process. Now, I know this is simple because there could be bigger decisions in your life. I have a friend of mine that's in our live mentoring group that is in the hospital right now because of stage 2. I, I don't forget the type of cancer, but it's on her tongue, and they took part of her tongue on Monday. So she had decisions to make as she went into that surgery. How was she going to let them treat? Because it's her response. Her, her decision to make on her body. I am grateful and we're praising God they got all the cancer. She won't have to do chemo and radiation. That is wonderful. But she had to make that decision to say yes to the doctors. Because we're making decisions every day. From... What time do we get up? From what do we cook for dinner? What is on the to-do list today? And some of them are major decisions. What do we do with our health? What do we do with our finances? And so in order to make decisions, you really have to be plugged into God to know what's right and what to avoid. And we do that all the time. When there's something... Recently, my husband wanted to purchase a put, uh, put on, um, pontoon boat because we wanted to get away and, and just go. We're 10 minutes from the lake. So he wanted to get on the boat and just spend Saturdays fishing and hanging out. Well, he's analytical. So we started doing some research. And, of course, we put it before God. Is this something you want us to do, God? Is this okay to do? And so he started doing research, and he's finding out here in the Carolinas, there are so many rules about fishing. There's only certain fish you can dance here in certain times of the year, otherwise it's catch and release. Who wants to go catch fish for dinner if you have to release them all? And then you have to know what kind of fish you've caught, so you can def see if it's a catch and release or if you can have it. And so it was just this whole conglomerate of rules. And he's like, I don't know if it's worth the fishing to own a boat and go out on the lake and fish because it's going to be such a headache. And then because we're in South Carolina, we're on state line. And our lake that's here by us, Lake Wiley, you can easily cross over into North Carolina. Well, then North Carolina's rules are totally different. So the decision as we're laying there, we're looking at this and going, okay, God, what do you want? Is this something, the timing is right, is this something you want us to do? And that's why he didn't jump when he, we first went out and looked at the boats. He could have signed the papers right there. But instead, what he did is, okay, I like this one. This will work for us. Let's circle back. And then as the process went through and as we were working on this decision... All of a sudden, now his work demand has changed. And he said to me the other day, he says, I am so glad we did not buy the boat. Because now it would be sitting in the driveway until January. So our decisions can be small. As small as what are we cooking for dinner? Two major purchases to our health. 
to mistakes that people have done to us. Hair. You know, maybe you went for your eyebrows to get waxed and they took the whole eyebrow off, you know. We've got decisions, small and big. But the key is, is that we are seeking God on them. And I know it sounds silly. Oh, why do I want to ask God what's for dinner? You know, it's about putting our whole life at his feet. You cannot give God your heart and not everything you have. He is part of our life, girls. And we need to make sure we're living what we believe. We're bringing him forward in our life at all times. We need to make sure that our decisions that we're making are not reactive. Could you imagine my response when she turned my head orange? And then after orange, she went totally blonde? I really could have reacted. And we could have demanded all money back, and it could have been ugly. But you know what? A lesson was learned for the girl that she just didn't listen to the client. She did not perform her job to the best of her ability. And it cost her another two hours of her time. I will live with what I've got. I will figure it out. I will either adapt to it being blonde, or I will... I do box color on my own all the time. I just, I need time to think about it and not just knee-jerk reaction. Because knee-jerk would have been stopping at Publix on the way home last night and getting box color and covering it up. So, decisions. We need to slow down. We need to stop reacting. We need to learn to respond. And we need to be taking these things to God. We need to allow God to control us instead of us controlling him. And I will tell you this much, last night, God controlled the situation with me and with my husband, who just wants to protect me. Because he went in there full arm, chest puffed out, and ready to demand money back if they didn't fix it. And when I walked out and I said, well, he says, well, at least you aren't orange and we can live with this. And we walked out, and I'm like, okay, I'm not sure what that means, hon. little more. And he says, so where do you want to go for dinner? And we're going to have to eat out now. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about the hair. You, you need to tell me, do I look stupid? Do I look like a clown walking through the neighborhood? So we had a conversation, and, and he likes it. He says it's very similar to what I've done before. And he's happy with it. So I have to be happy. I have to adjust. And God will calm me down. I know he will. But what decisions, girls? And are you responding or reacting? Do you have wise counsel in your life? I know the girls in Rise are going to just thrive because they've got our core group. That we come together and they're accountable. And if there's questions, they bring it forward. Do you have that in your life? You must find accountability and support that is like-minded. That's mandatory, girls, because you're not going to be able to do it on your own. Because if you do it on your own, things are going to get ugly, let me tell you. Because I know if I did yesterday on my own, it would have been really ugly. I would have been a very ugly person to that girl. That young lady who is new at what she does. I had to show compassion, and that came through God, not me, because this mama was livid, and almost to the point of being depressed. I mean, imagine looking at yourself in the mirror, and you've got a carrot top when you were dark brown. Scary! All right, so today's verse. Hopefully some of that makes sense. If you're in the middle of making decisions, girls, press into God. Let God guide you. And remember to pause and respond versus knee-jerk reactions. Way too many people reacting today. We see it in ministry. And then when they do this knee-jerk reaction, then they're shocked at the outcome. If we'd pause and respond and not react, our outcomes would be much more positive, inspiring, encouraging, edifying, all the stuff we're supposed to be 
as a Christian. So, verse 4 today, Wednesday, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Proverbs eleven fourteen, Where there is no guidance, the people will fall, but in abundance of counselors, there is victory. I love that. Because that just, God tells us right there. We're not supposed to be an island, girls. We're supposed to be coming together, identifying like-minded people, same heart, same God. Okay? Because everybody doesn't worship the same God calling them something else. There is one true living God, period. And if the people that are your counsel are not of that same mindset, then you're taking counsel from the world. There's nothing wrong with having people in your life that are non-believers. But when it comes to decision making, ladies, it is crucial that we are with like-minded people. Because they understand the biblical principle and the approach that God would take. It's just like counseling. If you go to get a counselor, really important that you find a Christian counselor. Because what they're going to she teach you is God's word. Where our worldly counselors, and nothing wrong with them, they do a great job with people, but their counsel is going to be of the world. So, your verse again, Proverbs eleven fourteen, Where there is no guidance, the people will fall, but in abundance of counselors, there is victory. All right, girls, write your verse down. Circle your keywords, look them up in Strong's or blueletterbible.org, and then ask God, what does he want you to hear out of that today? What in your life needs to shift so that you can have an abundance of victory? All right, girls, we'll catch you tomorrow, and have a fabulous day. Stay cool. We're getting heat everywhere. So, love you, girls. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.